In the uh, 50s and uh, into the early 60s, uh, Littleton was poised for a high level of uh, prosperity. Uh, Route 93 uh, was under construction and was basically uh, put into uh, on benefit of the community in 1961. Uh, in 1957, uh, more dam came online, and that uh, was a $41 million investment in the community, the largest capital investment uh, the community had ever seen, was paying approximately 65 to 70 percent of the taxes. They were uh, we were the first uh, community on the Immanusik to have a sewage treatment plant that came online in the early 60s. Uh, our shoe shops were under local ownership and uh, were employing uh, somewhere between six to 800 people, uh, Connors and Hoffman and also Henschel Shoe. All of our buildings uh, were school buildings were in uh, were relatively new. The elementary school uh, was built in 50. Uh, an addition was put on in 1956, uh, excuse me, 1958. Um, elementary, uh, the high school was rebuilt in the mid-50s, and the uh, what is now Daisy Bronson uh, Junior High uh, was uh, originally a parochial school that was built and again went in place in 1956. Uh, the town had a lot of things going for itself, uh, and it appeared that we were going to uh, be on, the, like I said, the cusp of some sustainable prosperity. Uh, but, as happens so often, uh, when one era ends, another era begins, and unfortunately the era uh, starting in the 60s and the, into the 70s was an era of decline. Well, I first came on the scene as, as working with the town and committees and whatnot in 1988, and I went on the budget committee in 1988, and I served there in 1988, 1989, and 1990. Then in 1990, I ran for selectman and was elected, and I served as selectman 91, 92, and 93. And uh, during that period of time, uh, Al Dixon was the manager, and Brian Ward came to us in probably 92, as I recall, and he wanted to reform what he called the Economic Development Task Force. And our question as selectmen was, what are, you, what are you going to do? What is this Economic Development Task Force? And Brian admitted that he didn't have an idea other than that something had got to be done. And he thought this might be a means of starting. So we endorsed it because we were coming out of the shoe shop economy, which was feast or famine, and, and uh, we had some extra, empty factories where the shoe shops had moved out. We had 17 vacancies on Main Street of 294 towns. We were the 29th poorest, and we'd lost 25% of our equalized valuation, and we were suffering double-digit unemployment, and we'd lost both of our local banks, and we were considered a property-poor town. And that's not much to brag about. But it does give you a long ways to go. Anyway, the only way is up. It's you're down pretty near the bottom at, at that point. With the task force, basically, when we first started it, uh, we had to stop the uh, the bleeding and the deterioration of our economy, uh, and we were able to do that. The next step was to basically stabilize the situation, uh, so that we would be able to have a base to uh, grow from. Uh, we were successful in doing that. The next. Uh, step was to strive for some prosperity. Uh, we currently are in a period of what I would call short-term uh, prosperity and what we're really working on now is to have an economy that is built upon sustainable prosperity and to achieve sustainable prosperity we've recognized that there's a, uh, there are four things that you really all have to include to be able to achieve that and one is a commitment to the community to make sure whatever you're doing um, is uh, filters down to the average person. The second uh, step is that you uh, make your investments in your economic infrastructure so that if opportunities occur, you have the things that communities need, water, sewer, electrical, roads, uh, all of the things that businesses need that they can't provide for themselves, nor will they. Uh, the th third step is you need a commitment to your educational product because the jobs of the future are going to be skill and te technology-based, and if you don't have uh, cradle-to-grave education in place, you're not going to be a competitive uh, community. And then the, f the fourth step is technology infrastructure. 
uh, that most communities don't have, especially north of Concord. Uh, so we're, those are the four steps that we're pursuing uh, to make our community uh, the community of the future and be able to recruit the next generation of job here in Littleton. Littleton has been fortunate uh, that uh, in <clears throat> coming out of the 90s, when the uh, early 90s, when the banks were in a state of near collapse, and we had lost our two locally owned banks, uh, that we currently have seven community banks who have built up their customer base with one client, uh, one customer at a time, uh, with assets of between 2.2 and 2.3 billion dollars. Uh, to have that type of financial horsepower in a small town of 6,000 is, is very remarkable and we're also very fortunate that the quality of our banks are exceptional in the sense that they're extremely um, proactive in recruiting business uh, for the Littleton area and also uh, very receptive of working with other groups whether it's Northern Community Investment Corporation, uh, the SBA or any other groups. So we, we have a lot of financial horsepower in Littleton that is unique to a town of 6,000. I've been fortunate uh, to have a lot of support uh, from our elected officials uh, once they've had a chance to see what we're doing and, and they've been impressed. I mean, Congressman Charlie Bass has repeatedly uh, spoken of, of the uh, imagination and the innovation and the energy that Littleton has and how we wish that it could be duplicated in other communities. Um, I, would, I would kill for a room of leadership like we saw this morning and we're seeing right now. Um, this is a tremendous asset right here, the, the, the strength of the people here in this room and their interest in this community, in this region. Um, and, and that's to your uh, great benefit. And if we could do in the North Country, across the North Country, what's done in Littleton, we wouldn't ha the North Country would be one of the most prosperous, wealthy parts of the country. You know, man, this, this community is a real jewel. I, I got to tell you, I just, uh, I'm just taken aback by, uh, you know, the, the energy here is, is tremendous. Uh, it, it, you know, from Martha McLeod starting this morning to everybody, I just, I, I just can't get over the enthusiasm that you have. Our executive counselor, Ray Burton, uh, has been a big fan and, and uh, little, Ray's favorite term is that Littleton is hot and getting hotter. Uh, former Senator Fred King uh, has described both locally and throughout the state that he considers Littleton to be the most progressive small town in the state. Uh, we've had been very, very fortunate to have elected officials that not only have supported our efforts uh, locally but have gone to state and federal agencies to establish partnerships. Um, with them and uh, in Department of Transportation, uh, Leon Kennison and Carol Murray, uh, the last two commissioners have been very supportive of us. And, and what they have also uh, told us and what we've learned is that there are ways to be successful in dealing with government. And uh, the way that success works is that number one, you need to develop your vision at a local level. You need to create uh, a credible plan uh, that can be supported at the state or federal level. Uh, you need to work with the state organizations so that when something reaches either Senator Gregg or Congressman Bass or Senator Smith, who's been very helpful with the Main Street TCSP grant, uh, that it has all of the partners in place uh, to have a successful application. And we've learned from the information that our, our state partners and federal partners have told us. So it's, it's, it's worked out very well. That, but th all of the vision that has occurred on in Littleton has basically been locally grown. The implementation has been through the partnerships that we've done. One of the key things that any community needs to realize, or at least from our experience, is that there is no silver bullet out there. There's no one thing that's going to turn things around. Maybe in, in some areas you'll have a company come in and create a 500 jobs or 1,000 jobs, uh, but that uh, hasn't been our experience. Uh, what we have done uh, incrementally is through a, a combination of two characteristics, perseverance and patience, of where we've been persistent in continually working to improve our community at the same time being patient uh, that uh, many improvements do not happen easily and they do not happen quickly and you can't get discouraged if things don't happen according to your particular timetable because we've learned in Littleton that everything takes time and no nothing ever happens as fast as you'd like to see it happen. Okay. One of the tools that we've used, and I use the term use in a positive sense, is uh, the media to get information out to the community uh, so that it can be uh, disseminated and distilled and uh, either accepted or rejected uh, uh, 
has been the media as far as what the economic uh, vision for the community has been. Uh, Channel 2, uh, I believe, has uh, attended every one of our task force luncheons and any type of initiative we have. Uh, they are always filming it and uh, allowing the people to view it at home at their own convenience and their own comfort and figuring out whether they do or don't like uh, the direction we're going in. So Channel 2 has been very effective as far as sharing uh, what is going on in the community uh, and also allowing the community at large to participate um, in a more uh, a newer medium and it's been very effective. Uh, we always try to keep the print media and the radio stations aware of the, some of the things that we're doing. So they, again, to share it with the community so that sooner rather than later they know uh, what steps are being taken and so that if there's a need to, to uh, correct uh, or to make an adjustment, uh, we, those, those of us who are participating in economic development initiatives, uh, can be straightened out. And uh, that uh, is very important because the last thing that you want to do is get too far ahead of your community or get in a position of where you really have a, a separate agenda that your community has not bought into. And we've been fortunate in Littleton that by using the media, we've been able to um, connect with the people and, and therefore get the support. And I think one of the key things was last August, in August of 2000, we had five separate Warren articles, uh, which were all were essentially bond votes, which usually required two-thirds of a vote, uh, all passed by over 70%. And uh, this uh, has a lot to do with Channel 2 getting the information out to the people and it also was a clear statement from the community that they liked the direction the town was going into and that they were willing to sacrifice uh, their tax dollars to move the town ahead for, for better days. So uh, the media has been a, a crucial partner in developing uh, the economic strategies that we have. The, the relationship with the selectmen and the town have uh, been basically a, a relationship of trust and what we've done is we go to the selectmen and we request an initiative that we'd like to pursue. We would like them to endorse it. Uh, we always include uh, town officials, uh, whoever they designate to participate in so that the communication is the maximum. And then we share, uh, sooner rather than later, the vision that uh, whether it's the uh, Economic Development Task Force, uh, Littleton 2005, LIDC, we try to share the vision we have of where we'd like to go with the community very, very early in the process. So that if we are somehow doing something that the community doesn't like, we'll hear about it. And uh, so that when we uh, eventually go for their financial support, if it's necessary, they're well aware of the project long before we ask them for any money. And uh, it's important that you let your community know where, you, where collectively everyone's working to send it because there are times when you can get ahead of your community. And when that occurs, uh, you don't usually get the support. So the community has got to be, has to be brought into the process early, and that's what we've done in Littleton. And on everything we've done, we let the community know just as soon as possible as to what direction we're heading in. Littleton, New Hampshire has certainly earned its selection as one of the ten best small towns in America. Littleton is the home of many thriving businesses and a large and expanding industrial Shopping on our acclaimed Main Street is an adventure, and Meadow Street is the site of many national retail stores. The River District development promises even more retail expansion. Our municipally owned water and light department has the lowest electrical rates in New England. Our credit union and five banks support entrepreneurship. We are served by locally based radio, newspaper and television. Municipal services are located in a modern facility. Our links with the rest of the country are state-of-the-art. Littleton is connected to Boston, New York, and Montreal by interstate highways. Visit our many art galleries, and there are over 30 places to eat. Littleton offers a great variety of housing options in delightful neighborhoods. All of our schools have recently received state awards for excellence. College programs are readily available. The area's health care needs are taken care of by the extensive staff at Littleton Regional Healthcare. Littleton has a variety of parks for sports and hiking close by. At the eastern gateway to the White Mountains, Littleton is a mecca for 
hikers and skiers. Littleton, New Hampshire, a great place to live, to work, and to play.